Hey there, welcome to What's New Andrew. Today we've got a really fun project. We're going to virtualize Open Media Vault on Proxmox. We're gonna take two hard drives that we have. We're going to pass those into the virtual machine. We're gonna set up a new file system, uh, create a RAID of those two drives and have everything up and running and ready to go. We'll walk you step-by-step step through all of this. I'll have links in the description below. And if you have any questions, go ahead and post them in the comments. So if this sounds like something fun that you wanna try, go ahead and follow along. We'll get started right now. Okay, here we are in a Proxmox hypervisor. Now in the previous video, we virtualized Home Assistant. Today, we're gonna to virtualize Open Media Vault. To do that, to create our virtual machine, we first have to get the ISO image for Open Media Vault. We're gonna do that out on the Open Media Vault website. I'm gonna have links to all of this in the description below so you can find all of it and follow along. We'll go on to download. And then in the under the stable link, we're gonna actually right click on it and say copy link address. We're not gonna directly download it. We'll go back to Proxmox. And this is where we're gonna download it directly into Proxmox. In your local drive, click on ISO images and then hit download from URL. Go ahead and paste that image or that link in there. Hit query URL. That's going to bring in the file name that you'll need. Make sure it has the .iso after it and then hit download. And once that's done downloading, we'll be able to create a virtual machine. Okay, we're all done with the download. Let's go ahead and close this window. And now we're gonna create our virtual machine. Up in the top right, you can click uh, create VM. In this, you can give it whatever number you want that you haven't used yet. I'm gonna go ahead and hit OMV for Open Media Vault is the name of it. If you don't have this bottom section, hit the little advanced uh, check mark down here. We're gonna to to go ahead and hit start at boot so that it starts anytime you uh, need to restart the machine. We'll hit next. Under OS, this is where we're going to select the ISO file that we just downloaded. So in my case, it's Open Media Vault 7. Then we'll hit next. Under system, don't need to make any changes, so we'll just hit next again. Now here under disks, we are gonna make a couple of changes. Since we're actually gonna be storing everything on the two drives that we're gonna map into this, we don't need a lot of storage on the, the boot drive. So 16 gigs is gonna be plenty for Open Media Vault and any uh, plugins that you might have. The other change that we're gonna do is up here, we're gonna uh, change this to SATA or S-A-T-A. Now that's gonna factor into the next step when we go to map those drives because those are gonna have um, SATA mappings as well. So we'll go ahead and change that right there and then everything else can stay the same. We'll hit next. Under CPU, I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck this just because it's uh, very busy there. Under CPU, one is plenty, but if you want, go ahead and give it two cores, make it a little bit uh, smoother operating. We'll hit next. Uh, 2048 is fine, but I'm gonna do 4096, which is four gigs. And then we'll go ahead and hit next and go to uh, the network. Under the network, I'm not gonna make any changes, but if you have a VLAN or anything like that, you can set that all up in here. So we'll hit next one more time. And you'll see that uh, this is the summary. Before we uh, check get start after created, we're gonna go ahead and finish it because before we start it, we wanna connect those two drives in. So let's go ahead and hit finish and you'll see that it's creating the, uh, the virtual machine up here in the left. And now let's attach the uh, storage devices to this machine. We're gonna map those in now. Okay, to map our drives, we need to go ahead and clear them out and make sure that everything's uh, ready to go. I have two drives that I'm gonna be mapping. We'll go up to our Proxbox node and we'll go actually down to disks. Under here, you're gonna see everything about your uh, machine with the disks. The first one here is where we have all the virtual machines stored. The next two are the two that I'm gonna use for the NAS device. So there's the 14 terabyte drive and a 16 terabyte drive. If you see any partitions under these, kind of the, the sub um, indention like up in here, Go ahead and click on them and hit wipe drive. Just make sure you're wiping the right drive because if you do the wrong one, you're gonna lose all your data because we're gonna to wanna to reinitialize these and create partitions then in the command line. So we'll do that now. Go over to your shell, again, still within the Proxmox node, not within the virtual machine, and we'll type lsblk. That will actually show us the exact same information, but again, we can confirm that we don't have any um, any partitions in it. Let's go ahead and create those partitions so we can get the UUID. The UUID is what we need to map into that Proxima or the, uh, the new Open Media Vault virtual machine that we're creating. The command we're gonna need to type in is cfdisk 
slash dev slash SDB. We're going to do on the B drive first, and then we'll do the C drive. Again, all these commands and everything are going to be linked down in the, uh, the description below. We'll go ahead and hit enter. It's going to bring up a pop-up and ask us what kind of a label type. GPT is what we want to do here. So GPT at the bottom, we'll say, we'll select new, and then it's going to say the partition size in the bottom left, 12.7 terabytes. That's exactly what we expected. So we'll hit enter. And then over to the right, we can hit write and type yes. Now the UUID we need is actually right here. We can uh, copy it here and save it for the next step, or I'm gonna show you another way to get it. So hit, go ahead and hit yes. And then we'll go to and select quit and hit enter. And now what we wanna do is we wanna do the same thing for the other drive, which is SDC. So we'll hit the up arrow, change it to SDC, hit enter. Again, select GPT, new partition. We're doing 14 terabytes, select right, type yes, hit enter, and then quit. And now if we type LSBLK, we'll see that we have a uh, partition set up for both of those drives. So that's perfect, that's exactly what we want. But now we need to get those UUIDs. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear the screen and we're gonna type a, a command called block ID or BLK ID. And that'll give us those UUIDs again that we needed. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take those UUI, UUIDs, I'm speaking a little too fast, and we're gonna connect those into the virtual machine. So there's a command for that. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, type that out and then we'll be able to connect them in. Okay, so the command we need is QM set 102. 102 is the machine number that we're connecting this to and then dash SATA1. So if you remember where I was telling about we changed the drive type to SATA, this is going to be the first SATA drive after our boot drive. So our boot drive is zero, this will be boot drive one. And since we're gonna go ahead and uh, do the first drive, we'll just select this up here, which is that UUID, everything between the, the uh, quotation marks, you don't want the quotation marks, and we're gonna paste that at the end. So now it's gonna say slash dev, disk, by part UUID, and then the UUID that we're looking for. We'll hit enter, and it gives us the message that uh, we have updated Virtual Machine 102 with this disk. And now we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna do it with the other UUID. So we'll go in here, we'll need to increment this SATA drive. We don't wanna use one, now we wanna use two. So we'll have drive zero, which is the boot drive, drive one and drive two. Let's go ahead and get the um, UUID. We'll actually grab the whole thing. Grab the UUID here for the second drive. And at the end, we'll go ahead and paste that in. And there we go. And hit enter. And now that one's been connected to the virtual machine. So let's go ahead and go over the virtual machine and double check that uh, everything's looking the way it should. We'll click on our virtual machine over here under hardware. We now see that SATA zero, that's that boot drive we talked about, that's our 16 gig drive. And then we have SATA one and SATA two, those are our two large drives. So that's it, we're ready to go and create this. We're gonna install Open Media Vault now. So we'll go over to console and we'll hit start. Okay, now it's gonna go into the, the install menu for Open Media Vault. Here at the first one, we're just gonna hit enter, you let it time out, it'll start going either way. Um, and then it's gonna ask us a few questions. English is the language I'm gonna use. I'm in the United States and American English for the keyboard. Most of this I'm gonna go through really quick, but I'll stop at any of the prompts and explain what they are. All right, so the first prompt we get to is asking for the host name of the machine. This is what you would see on the network if you were looking at it. I'm gonna just leave it at Open Media Vault, that's fine with me. And then the uh, domain name. If you wanna set one here, that's fine. Otherwise, I'm just gonna leave this as local. The next is the password. Now this is not the user interface password that we'll use to actually manage the system. This is the SSH root password. So go ahead and give a good password. Don't use the one that I always do in videos, which is password one, two, three. Now here's a, a spot where you need to be careful because you don't wanna install to the wrong device. So if you have multiple drives, you're gonna get this pop up. Go ahead and hit enter. And then in the, uh, the next section here, it's asking where do you want to actually install Open Media Vault? I'm going to choose the first one in my case, which is the 17 or the 16 gigabyte drive. The other two, the 14 and 16, 
those are the ones we don't want to install to because those are going to be the actual NAS storage. So let's go ahead and select the 16 gig uh, drive and we'll go ahead and continue the install. This section is asking where you want to uh, configure or how you want to configure your package manager. I'm in the United States, so I'm going to select that. I'm going to use the default uh, Debian package manager. This is what updates uh, Debian, the Linux underlying Linux system uh, behind the scenes. So we'll go ahead and select that one. And I don't have a proxy HTTP proxy, so I'm going to go ahead and continue and just skip on past that. And just like that, we're all done. We're going to go ahead and hit enter and continue. It's going to reboot, finish things up, and then it'll give us an IP address. That'll be the IP address of the machine that we're going to go to and log into the user interface. So we'll do that now. Now that it's rebooted and we have our IP address, which is right here, yours will, will likely be different. We'll go ahead and put that in a new tab. We'll open it up and we will uh, browse to that and log in to open Media Vault. So let's open up a new tab. We'll go ahead and put that IP address in there. Hit return and there you go. We're in the uh, interface for Open Media Vault. The default username and password are admin and Open Media Vault. So we'll go ahead and put those in and log in. And here we are. We're in the dashboard for Open Media Vault. What we need to do though is we need to connect those drives. They've gone ahead and been mapped in, but now we need to allocate them, create the file system for it. So if we click on storage, We'll go ahead and hit disks and we can see all of the disks. The two we added, if you remember, were SDB and SDC, the 12 and the 14 terabyte drive. Now, we can't do RAID yet because we're missing a plugin. So the new Open Media Vault, you just need to add a plugin. It's very simple to do. So we'll go do that now. Go up to System, down to Plugins, and we're going to type Open Media Vault. If I can actually spell. So Open. MediaVault-MD. So this is the plugin for multiple devices. We'll click on that one and we'll hit download or we'll hit install, confirm, and yes. And when this finishes and gets to end of line, then we'll be ready. So there we go. We got end of line. We'll hit close. Now it'll refresh. And when we go back over to storage, now we see this multiple device option that we didn't have before. So let's go ahead and click on that. And here's where we're going to actually uh, connect the storage or create the storage. We'll hit plus and you can select the RAID type you want. Now you're going to see all the different RAID types available, but some of them aren't going to be um, uh, options for you if you don't have multiple drives or you don't have the um, all the drives you need. The two we're going to look at here are Stripe and Mirror. Stripe means you're going to use the full capacity of both drives. The problem is if you lose one drive, you lose all of your data. Mirror is going to mirror it. So you're going to have two copies of your data. It's not a backup, but if one drive fails, you can replace it without losing the data. And so um, that's the one that, that I would highly recommend that you use because if you have a drive failure, you can swap it out, put a new one in, and continue on your merry way. But I'm going to use Stripe just because I think it's kind of fun. And we're going to select that one. We're going to select the two dev devices that we want to use, which is our 12 and 14 terabyte drives. And then we're going to hit save. The first thing it'll ask after that is it'll get, you'll get a little yellow pop up here. Anytime you make large changes in Open Media Vault, they're not immediately uh, they're not immediately done. It gives you the opportunity to revert. You can hit this little uh, button here, revert, and the change never went through. Or you can hit the check mark here and apply it. It's a great way to kind of catch you if you make a mistake. So we'll go ahead and hit uh, apply. Say yes, we actually do want to do this. And it'll go ahead and, uh, and start to build out everything for, for those drives. Okay, so we're all done. Now we are going to go over here to create a file system. So we've got the drives um, rated, meaning that they're, they're showing now it's going to show us one giant drive. Instead of having two drives, I have one giant 27 terabyte drive. So we'll go over to file system. Here we actually have to create the file system that we're going to use to write everything to. So we'll hit the plus icon again. Go down to ext4, that's the kind of uh, file system I'm going to set up. We're going to select the device we want to use. So when you click on it, you'll see that it has the uh, the large drive that we, we just created. We'll do that and we'll hit save. Now, this is going to take a long time, especially if you have a large drive. So I'll go ahead and uh, connect back up when it's done and then we'll uh, continue on from there. Okay, it's finally done. It took forever. All right, so now let's go ahead and mount the file system. 
hit the little plus button here. We're going to select the file system we want. The second one here, the ext4 with the two drives that are uh, that are striped. We're going to click on that one. We want to get warnings if it gets to 85%. You can really set this to whatever you want and hit save. Now, again, just like uh, a lot of things with the changes, you need to go ahead and apply it. So we'll hit uh, the check mark and say yes to apply it. And the changes are all complete. We've used a whopping two megabytes of our 27 terabyte drive. So the next thing we, we can do is um, set up all the shared folders, everything like that. Uh, but you've basically done the basics. We've now connected or created the virtual machine, passed the two drives into it, made a RAID of the two. We striped it. You could do mirroring if you prefer. We've created the file system. If you want to go ahead and create some shared folders, you just go down here to shared folders, uh, add those in. You can also enable services like SMB, which is going to be for uh, sharing folders like through Windows or through Macintosh. Uh, the NFS, you can set that up so you can have file shares from a Linux machine. You can edit your FS tab within your machine and share folders like that. You can do an rsync server, so there's all kinds of options that you can have. The other thing you'll want to do is go up to system and take a look at the updates. You can go in here and uh, see what updates are available for that for the machine. You'll go, want to go ahead and run those. Um, since it's a new install, I've got a whole bunch of updates uh, that are ready to go. You can also go into your dashboard and click on the settings page. I'm going to go ahead and enable them so you can see all the widgets. You can turn on and off the ones you, you don't care about, but here's a, a great way to have a dashboard with all the data behind your, uh, your, your Open Media Vault server. There you go. You now have Open Media Vault running on a virtual machine within a Proxmox hypervisor. This is a great solution if you don't have a lot of extra hardware or if you don't want to go out and buy a dedicated NAS system. This can sit on a machine that you're running other applications on. On this machine, I have Home Assistant running. I'm going to be adding more applications to it, and I'll do videos for all those kind of things. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video.